Hey everyone, it's Jackie from Vegan Yak Attack and I am back, finally, with a new video. It's been a little two month break, a little chaotic. Things have happened. Scenery has changed, if you didn't notice. If you're feeling like we're in the upside down right now. Corey and I bought a house. Well, actually this was the, uh, the string of events, was in early January, an offer uh, that we put in on this house was accepted. Um, a couple weeks later, we both came down with COVID. So that took me out for a couple of weeks and that's why I didn't uh, blog for a bit. Finally got my sense of smell back, probably like 95%. So we're, we're like good, um, a couple weeks ago. And then in the meantime, it's just been moving, prepping, dealing with, like I said, utter chaos. And now we're back with the new recipe for you. So I'm happy to be back. Um, I do have some house videos that I, uh, are in the queue right now. I was going to release them before this recipe video, but I decided I'm gonna split them up into weeks so they're a little bit easier to digest because there's a lot that has been going on already. Uh, hood replacement, stove replacement, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I wanna clue you in on all that's going on now. Aside from all of that, today we're making a delicious recipe and it is new to my blog, but I actually made it as a sponsored post back in December, I believe. Um, I changed up some, thing, some things so it's not quite the same, but this is a creamy broccoli pasta bake. So you got cashews, we have some herbs, broccoli, pasta obviously, onion, garlic, um, a little nutritional yeast, but otherwise it's, I mean, it's really simple ingredients that come together to make a really delicious uh, dump and bake style casserole, or not so much dump and bake, but a no boil pasta casserole is what we're looking at today because there is some cooking that happens beforehand. And as you see with this new configuration, I'm able to just cook right in front of the camera for y'all instead of using a butane burner. So that's really helpful for everyone, I think. Now first, what we are going to do is saute some onions. So we're just gonna put a little oil in the pan here, a couple teaspoons. Can be any cooking oil. I'm using a sauteing olive oil, so it's a little bit more high temp. We'll wait for that to get warm. And what we're also going to do is blend up a sauce. I have a recipe that's similar to this in my plant-based meal prep book. This is slightly different and not quite the same flavors, but the process is similar. So while this is heating up, it's not gonna take very long, it's almost there. Uh, we're going to put in our raw cashews, some nutritional yeast, some garlic cloves. I call for three in the recipe, um, but this one is quite large. So I'm just gonna put in two. You do you if you're a huge garlic fan. Then we have some lemon juice for acidity. Put that in there. We have some Italian seasoning. If you don't have this herb blend on hand, it's usually like basil, parsley, maybe a little oregano and uh, marjoram um, or majorum, sorry. Uh, so you can kind of put it together easily if you want. And then we're going to put some salt and pepper just in this, not really so much in this mixture um, because this sauce is gonna be all up in there seasoning everything while it's baking. Lastly, we have a cup of water and I'll leave that in there for just a second while we tend back to the pan here. So now that the oil is hot, we're going to add in our yellow onion and just saute that for probably three to five minutes, basically until it starts to get clear or translucent rather. And while that's sauteing, I'm going to go ahead and blend this up because if you noticed, I did not soak the cashews first. And so we're going to blend it, let it sit for a couple minutes and then blend it again. Now we're gonna let that sit for a couple minutes while we are sauteing the onion here. Mmm, it smells so good. I will say when I had COVID, um, 
and like I completely lost my sense of smell for probably like a week where it just was non-existent and up until maybe like three weeks ago I couldn't really smell like alums like onion and garlic and it was a very very sad time in my life now, typically in my dump and bake casseroles, I don't really cook onion beforehand, but I also make those with rice, which needs a lot more time to cook in the oven than say a pasta casserole. So because of that, I do like sauteing the onion first, and um, we're gonna really quickly cook the broccoli as well in just a second, and then that way you don't have this raw onion flavor in the casserole. These are starting to get translucent, so now, just to get a little flavor and heat them up, I'm gonna throw in some chickpeas. You can also use like white beans or even steamed tempeh if you want. Um, it's just an easy protein to use. And then I'm also going to add in our broccoli florets. And if you cut these off the stem, save the stems and I really like to um, slice them up and use them in stir fries. They're really, really delicious that way. Or even just roasted with other vegetables. I really love broccoli stems. Now we're gonna give that a minute. Go blend our creamy mixture again. And I am so sorry that I didn't mention this first, but you want to preheat your oven to 375 for this. Um, you may be good at this point to do it. Uh, now that I have an electric one, which is also why I have a induction or an induction cooktop, um, there's a little bit of a fan. Hopefully the noise is not uh, too obtrusive. Intrusive? Either way. Hopefully it's not too upsetting. You see here we got this nice creamy base. And obviously that's not enough to cook all the pasta. So because there's much more liquid, I add it in after. So you're not trying to cram like, you know, 10 cups of liquid into uh, one blender. That would be a pain in the butt. So we're going to be adding in actually five cups of broth all into the casserole dish once we add this all together. And totally up to you. Like I said, I added the salt and pepper in here, but I'm just gonna add a little pinch of salt to this and help soften the broccoli just a little bit. Okay. Now you will need a nine by 13 casserole dish. We'll use that, turn that off. We can go ahead and dump our pasta in there, just dried. Like I said, this is a no boil pasta bake. And then let's switch hands here. We will add our broccoli chickpea mixture. Stir that together a little bit. <laughs> try, try not to fling your broccoli everywhere. Hmm? Maybe. Okay, get that. Distribute it in evenly. Ugh, I love broccoli so much. I hope Corey eats some of this. He loves broccoli, but this could be tricky. Okay, now let's add in our broth. And lastly, we can add in, ooh, that nice cashew cream. And we'll stir this together. Now we'll give this a little stir without getting too messy. So now we'll just uh, cover this with foil tightly. There we go. And this way the moisture is sealed in so that it'll steam the pasta more efficiently. It's gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes. Then we're going to uncover it and bake it for another five minutes just to get some good texture on the top. Make sure there's no excessive moisture. <laughs> I'm 
my stove is yelling at me. Uh, and wish me luck, because this is my first time baking in this electric oven. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now, as promised, we're going to take this off and give it a little stir. Ooh, steamy. I cleaned the spoon like a dork. All right, we're going to give this a little stir. And then maybe, I know I said five minutes, but I feel like 10 may be beneficial. Basically, I'll keep my eye on it because the pasta ones tend to cook pretty quickly uh, when you're not paying attention. So I still think this probably 10 minutes. If you started out with a hot broth, uh, I think I just used room temperature, but hot broth kind of puts you over the edge in terms of getting a head start. So next time I would do that. But this time let's do 10 minutes back in the oven and then we'll enjoy. 10 minutes was a good call because now, ooh, look at this creamy, mmm, pasta. The nice thing about these um, no-boil pasta casseroles is that because essentially the pasta water is included with it, the starch helps make this even creamier and it's just like, I mean, Mm, so good. And actually, before we dig in, I'm just gonna do a little finishing salt on top of this. I have this herbed salt that I really like that's coarse. So I'll do a little bit of that on top since the salt probably cooked out just a teeny bit. Okay. And now, goes in the bowl. Hopefully not too hot to eat. Um, definitely too hot to handle that pan. Mmm, oh my gosh. Looks so good. Get some more broccoli in here. So steamy, so we may need to wait a second before I eat this. And in case you were curious, I have made this with gluten-free pasta before. And it really just depends on what the pasta is made out of as to whether it will work or not. So like a quinoa and like cornstarch based pasta is not gonna work as well as uh, like a brown rice pasta. Um, or if it's just chickpea pasta alone, I find that that's not all that successful with this type of um, casserole, but you know, maybe it just depends on the brand, but I've tried a couple and I feel like it has to be some sort of blend for the most part for it to work in a baked casserole like this. Otherwise, the noodles are either too al dente, uh, not cooked enough, or they're too soft and then in leftovers they turn into mush. So I much prefer to use glutinous noodles in these. But like I said, there are some that work. I think even the first time I made this, it was like a quinoa brown rice blend and it actually worked really well. So I'll leave that up to you, but I just wanted to add that little caveat in case you were wondering if you could use gluten-free noodles with this. Now, I think I'm gonna take a little bite. May still be a little hot. Look at how delicious that is. Ooh, yeah, this is very hot. And you could always add a little bit more ground pepper, whatever you want. <laughs> and let's take a little bite. Mmm. That's so good. I also like these pasta casseroles because the pasta, instead of being kind of like um, like slippery and cooked through all the way, like, like super cooked, when you do it in the pot sometimes, this gives you this nice, like chewy, but like I said, not undercooked, just like a more firm, like pleasant al dente texture. And some of that sauce soaks into it um, because it's being cooked in it, so it's not just like cooked in pasta water. And then you have these chickpeas, 
for a little protein, some broccoli, definitely salt to taste once it's all done. Um, different salts have different tastes really, like uh, sea salt is gonna have a little bit more salty flavor, really like more impact, it's more dense, as opposed to like a crystal salt, may not have as salty a flavor per like the measurements. Now this meal is great as I mentioned as food prep, like meal prep for the week if you wanna just have a couple entrees ready. Um, or, you know, you could feed a family of four with some leftovers, whatever you want. Um, comes together really easily as you saw. If you enjoyed this recipe, you can find the whole recipe with instructions that are printable on my website, veganyakattack.com. That link is in the description for you. Um, and if you like the video, Give me a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and I'll see you next time.